Hello everybody. Welcome back to another devlog. I'm making this video kind of as a follow-up to the first devlog. A lot of people had questions about how exactly my whole system works. So I thought I'd just make a kind of devlog 1.5 and I'm just going to go through all the code step by step and explain how everything works. So if you're interested in that, this video is definitely for you. I'm going to explain how everything works. I'm going to show you all the Kubernetes stuff, all of the RabbitMQ stuff, all of the Docker stuff, how it all works, how it's all set up, and all of the code and everything behind it. All right, let's get into it. So here we are on the server, and this is running on Kubernetes right now. So this the lobby server and the proxy are both running inside of Kubernetes. Basically, the proxy just has a load balancer that's giving it an external IP to connect to. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to go over to our NPC. And if we click him, it should say starting search for Void Rush, which is just the name of the, the minigame I'm working on. I'll talk about that more in the next video, but... So basically what that's done is it sent a message on RabbitMQ. It should be creating the server. And once it's done, it should connect us to the server all through Kubernetes, all through RabbitMQ, all done automatically. And yep, there we go. Let's connect this to our game server. Here we are. And if I just start the game, everything should work. We can play. Game doesn't work yet, but basically that's it. That's how it works. So now I'm going to actually go through and explain what all just happened. Okay, so the very first thing that happens is we use a Kubernetes command to deploy a pod with this proxy server running in it. This is a velocity proxy. I've just written a custom plugin for it that kind of manages all of the Kubernetes stuff, all the Docker stuff. The very first thing that happens is the proxy initializes all the default velocity proxy stuff gets booted up and then it loads our plugin. So this plugin, the very first thing it does is it initializes a rabbit MQ connection right here. So basically it's just creating a connection to the RabbitMQ server. Then the next thing it does is it starts consuming messages from that server. So these three lines here all start consuming on a different channel. So this first channel here just consumes server declares. And basically what that means is it's listening on the RabbitMQ server for every time a server sends a message to that queue saying, here I am, this is my IP, I need players to be able to connect. The next line is listening for player joins. I think I should actually rename that because that's not really what it does, but basically what it's doing is it's listening on the player join queue, which is actually a matchmaking queue. The proxy doesn't have that NPC, the lobby server does. So when we click on that, join NPC, it has to send a message to the RabbitMQ server. And then this proxy consumes that message because the matchmaking is all happening on this proxy server rather than the lobby servers. So that's all that's doing. It's just listening for when the player clicks on one of those NPCs. And then the third and final message consume line there is just a simple channel that I have set up so I can publish messages to that and it'll shut down all of the Kubernetes pods. That's just more for debugging and testing because it's really annoying to have to manually shut down each pod individually. So I've just created a, a simple way of shutting them all down at once. The next four lines, the only important one is the spin up lobby servers um, because the rest of them are just uh, registering commands and events and other basic plugin stuff that's really not important to this explanation. So let's take a look at what that spin up lobby servers function does. So here we are. Anything with logger, um, it's just outputting a message to the console. So I can kind of see what's going on. It's just for debugging. But essentially what it's doing here is it's creating the lobby servers. So it just loops a certain number of times. I have this only set to one because uh, right now I only need one lobby server, but I could set this to anything. So if I set this lobby servers variable to like 10, then it would it would loop 10 times and create 10 lobby servers. But where it's actually creating the server is in this server manager .create lobby server function. So let's take a look at that. And here we have the real kind of uh, code behind creating the lobby server. So on, this, on these first few lines, we're just creating all the variables we need for accessing Kubernetes. That first one is just creating a API client. The next line basically just says, set the Kubernetes cluster configuration for that client to be the current Kubernetes cluster that the application is running in. So it's just saying basically the, the current Kubernetes cluster. And then the next thing that's kind of important is 
this block here. And what that's doing is it is creating all the variables that we're going to need for our pod and it assigns some environment variables that we'll use later on the actual servers running inside those pods to set some data that we need to know like that pod ip we're going to need to know that so we can actually connect players through the proxy yes yeah, so then we create the container object with all of that data um, we create the pod and then we just use the api to create that pod inside the Kubernetes cluster. And that final line there is just adding the lobby's UUID, which is part of the metadata, just so the server can be identified. Right now, I'm just using the name of the pod. I think that's not really the best way. I got to find out a better way to do this. But right now, it just creates a random UUID and then calls that pod lobby dot the UUID. And then I can just read it from that. But I think there's probably a better way to do that. So if anyone knows a better way to do that, that'd be super helpful if you could let me know in the comments. Anyway, that last line there is just adding that um, lobby UUID into a list of lobby servers just to keep track of it. It'll be more important later when we're deciding what server to connect players to. So that's kind of everything that happens when I start up the proxy. It will create a lobby server. It sends a message to RabbitMQ once the lobby server is actually started, and then it'll register that server on the proxy so players can actually connect. The next thing that happens is with the actual minigame. So when we click that NPC, we do some basic matchmaking stuff. It's really nothing too fancy right now. It just has a big list of players. When there's enough players in that list, it'll just divide it into the amount of players it needs, and then it will send them into a game server. Creating the game server works exactly the same way as the lobby server. It just spins up a server then when that server comes online or sends a message to RabbitMQ with its UUID and everything. And then we just register that server and connect players to the server. So that's pretty much the whole system. It's very kind of beta right now. I haven't really stress tested it at all, or I'm not even sure if it works under real scenarios. The only thing I've tried is with like one or two players trying to connect and it, it works right now. But I honestly, I think there's some big issues with it that I'm going to have to solve. For example, I don't know if I can actually use the pod IP because I think Kubernetes might destroy, like, I don't know if Kubernetes guarantees that that pod will be, they'll always be under that IP. Like, I feel like it might destroy it and create a new one. I'm not really sure, but there's all issues I'm gonna have to sort out. But right now, this is the basic system. It's not insanely complicated. It's just, there's a lot of different applications. Like there's a lot of different places messages have to go. There's a lot of different applications that have to be talked to. Um, there's a lot of different things that have to be coordinated for it to all work. But right now, that's the whole system. Once I kind of improve it, I'll make another update on how exactly it works. But if you're curious on how to do this, this is kind of a little bit of a walkthrough on how my system works and some of the code behind it. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I know this was kind of a less exciting video, but hopefully some of you found it interesting. Anyway, if you haven't seen the first video already, I would highly recommend watching that as it'll give some context for the rest of the project. And again, maybe if you're not as interested in this kind of coding deep dive video, you'd be interested in some of the future videos. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and have an excellent rest of your day.